Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Murder on margin? Yes, we have that crime club story for you. Come right over. <laughs> chair by the window. Comfortable? The book is on this shelf. Here it is, Murder on Margin, by Robert George Dean. The very intriguing story of the stocks of passion and the bonds of death. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. It is late evening in a room of a shabby hotel in Midtown Manhattan. A trim, slick-haired man is eyeing the blonde girl sitting near him on the sofa. He watches her carefully as she pours herself a drink. You're hitting the bottle tonight, ain't you, Joan? That's the fourth one you've had. So what? Nothing. Only when you start guzzling like that, it's a sin something's eaten. I told you I was tired. Okay, baby, okay. Come in. Oh, please, Nick, don't. Yeah, you are tired, ain't you? Well, what do you expect? You know better than anyone else what a day I put in. <laughs> you've had tougher days. Maybe I have. Maybe I'm just getting sick of being a manicurist. Well, I can't blame you for that. I'm not crazy about being a barber, either. Don't. What? Maybe you'll be able to quit your job soon. How? You know Larry Carson, don't you? Who? Larry Carson, the stockbroker. You know, the guy in the brokerage house a couple of doors from us, huh? Oh. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I think I've done his nails. Oh, sure, sure you have lots of times. Well? He's a smart trader. Knows the market inside out. Mm-hmm. Well, he's been giving some tips to Tony who cuts his hair. And Tony's made himself quite a bundle. So what? So I've been talking to Tony. And he's going to pass them tips on to me. Oh. I'm going to start right away. Uh, just as soon as Carson gets back. Gets back? Yeah. He told Tony today he was leaving town on a business trip. But he won't be gone long. What's the matter? Oh, uh, oh nothing. I, I, I think it's a swell idea, Nick. You bet it is. Pretty soon I'll have some real dough and then... Ah, uh, come here, baby. Don't, Nick. Ah, uh, just a little kiss, honey. Don't. Uh, Hey, you act like I'm poison or something. I said, come here. And I said, let go of my wrist. Let go. Hey, you got a bracelet on under your sleeve. You're crazy. Am I? Come on, let me see it. No. Let me see it. No. My oh. Oh, Just a minute, sweetheart. Okay. Give me back that bracelet. Shut up. Diamonds, huh? Are you dirty too, Tamman? Oh. Who's the guy? I asked you, who's the guy? Larry Carson gave it to me. Carson? Yeah, it, it doesn't mean anything, Nick. I swear, I, I've been playing him for a sucker, that's all. Playing him for a sucker? Yeah, just just getting all I could out of him for the two of us. <laughs> no, Nick, no! don't! <clears throat> for the two of us, huh? Come on, get up. Get up, I said. Don't. Don't. Are you... Are you all right? Get up. Get up! Okay. I'm going. So long, sir. <laughs> Yes, Ruth? It's rather late. I'm quite aware of that. Well, you mentioned that you wanted to turn in early. Still the dutiful wife, eh? Well, I have some market reports I want to study. Oh. Answer that, will you? Hello? Oh, yes. Just a minute. For you, Larry. For me? Yes. Hello? Hello, Larry. This is Joan Randall. I thought I told you never to call this number. I know what you told me, but I had to talk to you. Tried the other place and couldn't get you. I see. All right, what do you want? I, um, I heard you were taking a little trip tomorrow. Yes? I thought we had a date. Sorry, I meant to call you about that before I left. Oh, you meant to, huh? Yes, it came up suddenly. It's just a routine business trip. I'll be back in a few days. I don't like it. Oh, don't be silly. I'm not. I've had the feeling for some time now that you wanted to brush me off. What? I want to warn you, Larry. Don't do it. I shall do whatever I please. Yeah? Well, get this through your head, Mr. Carson. You'll pay off or else. Hello? Did you hear me? I said you'll... This one didn't write either, did you? Do you learn? It's convenient to have a wife, isn't it, Larry? It must sound convincing when you tell them I won't give you a divorce. Yes, I guess it does. Larry, when are you going to set me free? Soon. You've been saying that for months now. Carl and I want to be married, and I want a clean start. That's why I haven't begun any action myself. 
Yes? We don't want to wait any longer. I want a divorce now. Very moving appeal, my dear. But I confess I don't understand it. You and Carl Hamill? Well, he's strictly a lightweight. Is he? Then why did you ask him to be a partner in your firm? Well, it's quite simple, Ruth. I needed some money. Now I'm sorry I took him in. So it's Carl. I don't doubt it. Larry. Hmm? I heard you mention something about a, a business. That... Well? If you were to stay away a long time, it would delay my divorce. Hmm. That's quite an idea. Yes. I've got another idea, too, Larry. Oh? What is it? I'm afraid I'd better keep this one to myself. Oh, Mr. Hamill. Oh, good morning, sir. Can I help you? Well, yes, at least I hope so. I'd like to see Mr. Carson. Well, Mr. Carson is a very busy man. Oh, I know, Mr. Hamill. I've been waiting here outside his office since quarter to ten, and now it's twenty after. Oh, I see. Well, I was just going in to see Mr. Carson myself. I'll tell him that you're here. Oh, thank you. Oh, by the way, what's your name? Uh, Pat Barton. Pat Barton? The private detective? Oh, yes. I, I want to consult him about some stock. Oh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. Do you mind if I glance at the ticker? No. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Commercial Solutions, 31 and a half. Say, that looks like a pretty good stock, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Might go up to 32. Uh, yes, Larry, I will. Oh, is that last order 29 and a quarter? Right. Oh, Mr. Barton. Yes, Mr. Hamill. I told Mr. Carson you were waiting. He'll see you in 15 minutes. Oh, thank you. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just keep my eye on the ticker. Fine. See you later. Right. Uh, let's see. Salt preferred, 20 and a quarter. Elias. All right, Mr. Barton. I think we can go in now. Okay, Mr. Hamill. Oh, Larry, this is... Well, that's funny. He isn't here. You're wrong, Mr. Hamill. Look, on the floor near the desk. Good Lord! Someone put a rope around his neck and pulled it tight. Very tight. I swear I don't know how you do it, Pat, but every time there's a murder, you're right in the middle of it. Well, I'm sorry, Lieutenant Riley. It just happens. I don't arrange them. No, huh? Well, the way you solve them sometimes makes me wonder. Okay, forget it. Let's take another look at the late Mr. Carson. Okay. Uh, let's see. After he was strangled, he must have slipped to the floor. Mm-hmm. But that would hardly account for his must-up appearance, though. What do you mean? Well, his shirt is half out, and his belt is twisted. Do you think that maybe he was just a sloppy dresser? No, Lieutenant. You can see his suit was obviously just pressed. And look at the shine on his shoes. Uh-huh. I think the killer must have searched him. For what? His wallet was still on him and nothing was missing from it. Yes, but there wasn't much money in it. Uh, uh, did the medical examiner give you the time of death? Yeah, probably between 10.15 and 10.30. Mm -hmm. mm. I suppose that tells you who the murderer is, sir. Not quite, Lieutenant, but it helps. Yeah, a lot. What gets me is how the killer got in and out. Now, there's Carson's private entrance leading to the hallway into the street, and that's locked. Uh-huh. And now, this door here to the main office, through which you entered. Now, you say that you were sitting right next to it from a quarter to ten on? Yes, and the only yeah. one who entered was Carl Hamill. Uh, I think I'll have a little talk with that guy. Mr. Uh, Hamill? Yes, Lieutenant. Would you mind stepping in here? Not at all. Mr. Hamill? According to Mr. Barton here, you were the only one to enter this office. Yes. And that was about 20 after 10, a time when Carson might have been killed. What do you mean? You you know that he was alive when I left the office. Do we? Well, of course, Mr. Barton. Well, you were sitting right at the door when I came out. You heard me turn around and, and ask him about that last quotation. Yes, I heard you, but I didn't hear him. Huh? Oh, that's right. I remember now. He didn't answer me. 
face. He just nodded. Oh, I see. Mr. Hamill, excluding Mr. Carson, who had a key to the private entrance of this office? Well, I... I believe Mrs. Carson had one. Oh, she did, eh? Yes, but surely you don't think that she had anything to do with this. Why, she couldn't... Take it easy, Mr. Hamill. Pat. Yes, Lieutenant? One of my men reported that in the hallway leading from Carson's private entrance to the street is a door of a private club. Oh. Yeah. Now, there's a doorman posted at that door from 9 o'clock on. He'll be able to tell us just who entered this office by way of that pi- private entrance. Oh, good. Well, I get... Yeah, what's that? What is that? It's a plot closet, Lieutenant. Let me out. Oh, there she is. Behind the filing cabinet. Oh. Hey, give me a hand, will you? I can't seem to get out of here by myself. All right, all right. We'll just get this cabinet out of the way. Then. There, there we are. Okay, come on out. Yeah, sure. Why, Miss Randall. You you know this girl, Mr. Hamill? Why, yeah, she's the manicurist at a barber shop a few doors down the street. Oh, okay, Miss Randall, talk. Huh? Uh, she seems to be pretty uh, drunk, Lieutenant. Yeah. What were you doing in that closet, sister? Who wants to know? I'm Lieutenant Riley of the police. Police? Yes. Take a look at the floor near the desk. Oh, Barry's dead, huh? Uh-huh. You ought to know. Me? I didn't do it. No? How'd you get in here? I had a key. Larry gave it to me. Oh. The louse was going to run out on me. I wanted to have a little talk with him. Uh-huh. And I got here early, before nine. Didn't want anybody to spot me coming in. I hid behind the cabinet in the closet. How come you're so boiled? Well, I knew it would be a long wait, so I took a flask along. I, I was nervous. And before I knew it, the flask was empty. And then I passed out. Uh-huh. Miss Randall, there's a keyhole in that closet door. Did you see or hear anything that might help us? No, not a thing. I see, I see, I see. Okay, sister. I'm going to send you home to sober up. But don't get any idea that you're out of this mess. I'm going to check on you all the way. Pat? Yes, Lieutenant? Get your hat. We'll start checking with the barber shop where she works. <laughs> Were you Carson's barber, Nick? No, Lieutenant. Tony took care of him. Oh, well, where, where is this Tony? Well, it's been raining all morning. We were slow, and Tony and the others ducked out. They're probably chewing the fat in a cafeteria down the street. Uh-huh. You got a manicurist named Joan Randall? Uh, yeah. Sh- she didn't show up this morning. I don't think she'll be in today, Nick. Huh? Well, well, what do you mean, Mr. Barton? Why are you so nervous? Well, uh, Joan and me, we've been kind of going around together, and if anything's happened to her... Well, nothing's happened to her yet. But she's in quite a spot. You see, we found her in Mr. Carson's closet. Yeah? She was pickled, Nick. Now, was that a habit of hers? Well, uh, when she's worried, uh, she likes a couple of shots. Uh Uh-huh. Nick, it seems that Joan and Mr. Carson were quite friendly. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, it didn't mean anything. He had a lot of dough and, uh, well, you know, you know how it is. Yes, we know. You, you don't think she killed Carson, do you? We're not sure, Nick. But if you ask me, you're going to need a new manicurist. For me, Lieutenant, it is unbelievable. I simply refuse to believe it. I know, Sasha, I know. But Carson's dead. You have to help us. Huh? Me help you? Oh. What time were you at your post this morning? What time? Why, nine o'clock. In all my 23 years as doorman to this club, I arrive at nine sharp. Not before, not later. Uh Uh-huh. And from your post, you can see anyone who enters the hallway to go to Mr. Carson's office. Absolutely. Sasha... Do you know Joan Randall, the manicurist from the barber shop around the corner? You mean the blonde barish? Sure I know her. Did you see her enter the hallway this morning? No. Are you sure? Absolutely. Mm. She must have got here before nine, like she said. Did you see anyone else, Sasha? Yes. Just one person. Who was it? It was Mrs. Carson. Mrs. Carson, eh? What time was that? About a uh, quarter after... Uh, no. Twenty after ten. And she went down the hallway to Mr. Carson's office? Yes. Did you see her go in? No. The hallway turns to the left. You can't see the door. He's right, Lieutenant. Okay, okay. Now, I want you to be very careful about this next one, Sasha. When did she come out? I don't know. Uh Huh? You see, a little while after she came in, I had to call a cab for a member. Yeah? I was outside for a couple of minutes. In other words, she could have slipped out during that time. All right. 
Oh. Sasha, would it have been possible for anyone else to have entered while you were outside? Oh, this could not happen. When I went out, I looked up and down the street. There was nobody near enough to sleep in. Oh, I see. Well, Lieutenant, what's next on the menu? The blue plate special, Mrs. Carson. Mrs. Carson, do you have any idea who might have murdered your husband? No, Lieutenant. I have. Yes? You, Mrs. Carson. Me? Yes. Why, that's absurd. Utterly absurd. For your information, you were seen going down the hallway to your husband's office. What? Oh, come, Mrs. Carson. The identification was positive. You were there, weren't you? Yes, Mr. Barker. But I didn't see Larry. Huh? Well, what do you mean? Well, I... I went up to the door of the office, and then I stopped. Why? The transom was open. I, I heard Carl, uh, Mr. Hamill, talking to Larry. I lost my nerve and left. What do you mean, you lost your nerve? Well, I guess I'd better tell you the whole story. Yeah, I guess you'd better. I'd wanted a divorce from Larry for some time. Without going into it, I can assure you I had very good reasons. Yes, we met one of them. Hmm? Never mind, Mrs. Carson. Go on, please. Well, I, I met Carl Hamill, my husband's partner. We fell in love. I told Larry about it and asked him for a divorce so that Carl and I could be married. Mm-hmm. Larry kept putting me off. Then last night, I learned that he was taking a, a trip out of town. He said he'd be gone for only a short time. Yes? I had the feeling that he was up to some. You see, he was very spiteful. I felt that he was going to stay away to the day of my divorce. I made up my mind that he wasn't going to get away with it. Uh-huh. This morning, I set out for his office for a showdown. I... I took a gun along. A gun, huh? Yes, but when I stood outside Larry's door and... And heard Carl's voice. I, I realized how foolish I'd been. I knew that I, I could never kill Larry. Uh huh. I, I turned around and went home. Mrs. Carson, did you hear what Mr. Hamill and your husband were talking about? Uh, uh yes. They, uh, they were discussing some stock quotations. Did Hamill mention the quotation on murder? What do you mean? You don't think that Carl? Oh no. He didn't kill Larry. Of course not. He didn't. You didn't. Nobody did. Only the guy is dead and the commissioner wants to know why. Hello? Hello, Ruth. Oh, Carl. I was hoping that you all... You, uh, you heard about Larry? Yes. The police have just left. Oh. Carl, I'm afraid we're in trouble. What? What's the matter? I did something terribly foolish. I, I went to Larry's office this morning. What? But why did you... Wait, I, I didn't see him. When I got to the door, I heard you talking to him. Oh. I, I heard you quarreling. Did you? Did you tell the police about it? No. No, I told them you were discussing stock quotations. Carl, is, is there anything you want to tell me? Ruth, you, you don't think I killed him, do you? No. But, darling, you sound as if... I love you, Carl. No matter what happened, remember that. I love you. Good evening, Lieutenant. I made it as fast as I could. What's up? I've got some more pieces for our puzzle. You have? Yes. Do you remember when we examined the corpse, you thought the killer had searched him? Yes. Yeah, you were right. And whoever it was made off with a hundred grand. What? I had a man go over the books at Carson's. There was a hundred thousand missing from the credit balances. Mm -hmm. Now, it looks like Carson was going to take it on the lamb, you see? And he figured on traveling light to throw everyone off guard. Yes, probably just an overnight bag and the money. From the appearance of his disarranged clothing, I'd say he had the cash in a money belt. Uh-huh. Did you speak to Hamill about this? Yes. Yes, and he was quite upset. Not only over the loss of the dough, he said. He was worried about the effect on the firm's business. Mm. Well, is, is there any way to trace that money? No, and I haven't got the ghost of an idea. Who can I... Wait a minute. Hmm? Joan Randall. I've had the feeling that dame was holding something back. You think she took it? Either that or she knows who did. Come on, Pat. Let's get to her before she puts away another quart. Maybe she's out, Lieutenant. Yeah, Pat, but not the way you mean She's probably hit that bottle again. 
Oh, there's no use. The door's locked. I have a key, Lieutenant. Huh? A key that opens a lot of doors. Oh, well, go ahead. Make believe I'm not looking. Okay. There we are. Now, let's see. The light switch ought to be... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't smell any liquor, so maybe... Holy smoke. She really is out. Look, for good. Yes. Whoever stabbed her wasn't kidding. She must have been lying on the bed. Is that odd? What is? Well, apparently, after she was stabbed, she still had enough strength to reach down and clutch one of her shoes from under the bed. Yeah, she probably rolled over and held on to whatever came into her hand. No, Lieutenant. Shoes are usually placed together on the floor. And from the position of the one still there, it would have had to strain to get the shoe she's holding. Uh, yeah. Well, why do you think she grabbed it, Pat? I think it was an attempt to tell us who murdered her. Oh, well, it, it's a woman's shoe, and the only other woman in the case is Mrs. Carson. Mm. Or maybe, yeah, yeah, while I was talking to Hamlin about that money, he told me he used to be a, a shoe manufacturer. What? Yeah. Well, I guess that does it. Uh, I'm not sure. Huh? There's something that keeps buzzing at the back of my mind. Something that... Uh, I, of course, Larry Carson's shoes. Larry Carson's shoes? Yes. Now, there's just one thing we ought to check, Lieutenant. And then I think you'll be able to wrap this case up. Better keep back out of sight, Lieutenant. Okay, Pat. I just wanted to make sure that Sasha is still sitting on that park bench. Oh, don't worry. I've got my eye on him every second. Are you certain your plan will work? Well, I don't see how it can miss. A half hour ago, Sasha telephoned the killer... His message will force the murderer to meet Sasha here in the park. I see. Then you expect another knife and job, huh? Right. And we'll have to be on our toes to prevent it. Wait, Lieutenant. I think we're getting a bite. Hello, my friend. I was beginning to think you weren't coming. I thought maybe... Help! Get him, Lieutenant. Get him. Stop or I'll shoot! Good shot, Lieutenant. Are you all right, Sasha? Yes, Mr. Bart. Good. Is he alive, Lieutenant? Yeah, the bullet just creased his scalp. Oh. Okay, Nick, come on, come on. Up on your feet. Huh? As a barber, you usually stand behind a chair. Well, now we're going to let you sit in one. <laughs> Did Nick reveal where he hid the money, Lieutenant? Yes, it was under the floor in his room. Oh, good. Mm. It's nice of you to give me a lift home, Lieutenant. Ah, that's all right, Pat. You deserve it. And Sasha, too. Ah, it was nothing. Nothing at all. Only don't ever ask me to do it again. <laughs> don't worry. We won't. Say, Pat. How did you tumble to Nick, anyway? Well, there was the fact of the shoes. Carson's and Jones. Uh-huh. Carson's shoes were shined. And that was peculiar. Why? Well, since it rained all morning, his shoes should have been spotted. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But I failed to see the importance of that fact until Joan was killed. She died in the act of reaching for her shoe. Uh-huh. And then it hit me. Someone had shined Carson's shoes. Obviously, he wouldn't have done it himself. So the only other possibility was a shoe shine man. Yeah, but where in the world... Well, since there was no shoe shine man involved in this case... I turned to the only person who could have impersonated one. Nick the barber. Exactly. Oh. He was alone in his shop. Not only the barbers were gone, but also the shoeshine man. I see. So Nick dressed up in the dark apron, carried the box, and got by. Uh-huh. Yet, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute. How did he get into the Carson's office without Sasha seeing him? But you know, Lieutenant, there are some men who are invisible. Invisible? Yes. That is, they're taken for granted. Nobody observes them. Like a, a mailman, for instance. Oh, well, a shoeshine man visiting the offices in a business building is exactly the same. You pay no attention to him, so he loses his identity. I see. Of course, when I brought the point up with Sasha, he remembered. What did you say, Sasha? Never again. For the rest of my life will I get a shoeshine. A 
again, so closes tonight's Crime Club book, Murder on Margin, based on a story by Robert George Dean. James Erthine did the radio adaptation, Roger Bauer produced, and Jock McGregor directed. Jack McBride played Lieutenant Riley, Julie Stevens was Joan, Helen Shields was Ruth Carson, Danny Ocko played Sasha, Ray Thompson was Pat, Joe DeSantis was Nick, and Sherling Oliver was heard as Carl Hamill. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello? I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. Good. We have the very exciting story of a package that was wrapped up by death. It's called Murder Makes a Mummy. In the meantime... Well, in the meantime, there is a new Crime Club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we'll look for you next week. This program came from New York. This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.